Alrighty, welcome back. It's Friday. I'm your man, Bad Chad, and Queen Jolene's on the camera. It's a beautiful day here in Nova Scotia today, but what's going on today? We're just going to do a little shop tour, you know. I might do a little bit in the end, but um, it's such a nice day today that let's just do a little shop tour. Right now, I got the we've got the big tractor. We've got it on charge. I just want to see if it's going okay. Yeah, she's on charge. We're going to charge the truck up and maybe start this bad boy up today. Um, if you let it set for a while, the, the batteries will go down. It probably should have it on a trickle charger or something like that. But uh, once the batteries are charged up, we'll see if we can get her going. This is the, the truck that me and Jolene bought uh, from Murray Edmonds in Halifax. We bought it a while back. Um, it's a cool looking old truck, that's for sure. Get up and take a look at her, baby. Jolene will get up inside and take a look, show you the inside of it. It's a it's a badass truck. Or I think it is anyways. It's something where we're going to have to get our license and uh, go from there. But it's almost an antique. I think one this year or next year it's an antique. So then we'll be able to get it um, road fitness and then we'll be able to drive it as a probably will probably register it as a camper probably because we would we would never be using this to haul anything other than our own stuff but it's a cool rig I really like how um, how the it looks like it's chopped how it's got the piece of I don't know if it's metal or aluminum what it is but it's over top of the door it makes it look like it's chopped I like the visor on the front of it that it makes it look chopped um, obviously being a cab over um, makes it just a little more special a little more special and we've got the 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 48 Ford, the race car hauler. As um, soon as we got that done, we kind of just pulled it out and we left it there. It's kind of been sitting there. I might even try to start it for you. What the hey? I haven't started it um, for quite a long time. I don't know if the battery's up on it or not. And there's still a couple little things I have to do to it, but other than little tinkering things, there's not much to do to it. I still didn't get the tie downs for the race car yet or anything, but it's kind of just sitting here. I'm going to try it. What the hey? It's shop tour day. It's Friday. If I remember what's going on. <laughs> Smell gas? Not good. I smell gas, I think. I did. It's got a choke here. It should. No need to keep running her like that. Just burn the starter out of it. Probably what happened is I just get a little drink of gas she'd take off. But she didn't want to start for me. But we just got it setting here in front of the shop. I like looking at it when I come up the road. I see it in there. I like all the color. Um, Jolene's race car on the back. Uh, it's a good looking thing from the road as far as I'm concerned. I like it. This is the Winnebago that we, we uh, purchased from a friend, Riley. Uh, Jolene keeps her her t-shirts and hats and that sort of stuff if somebody comes and wants a t-shirt or hat we usually if we have it in here so this is where we go to get it it's kind of a just a place for storage i guess it's a cool little thing and that's why we bought it and the price was very right that's why um it's very it's kind of I'm not going to say rare to see something this this short as a camper, but he kind of did it up quite nice in the inside with the wood and the, and the metal. It's kind of rustic looking. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. I don't want to try to start this one either. I don't think it's got a battery in it right at the present moment, but we just kind of let it set here and, and hold the goods. Um, this would kind of be a, it would be a cool build, I think. Even got the, the 
aftershave or whatever it is av on with the winnebago on it it's pretty cool shop tour people shop tour just because it's a beautiful day and i'm i'm feeling kind of lazy today i've got uh, the truck still to continue on we got the little fiat there i looked at that this morning and i said i should chop the roof off that but um where it's such such in good shape it probably should hold back off chopping the roof off it because someone might want it i'm thinking that the interior is in pretty good shape on this bad boy not bad i mean i i say that and the front seat's ripped but i mean for the year and, and what the door skins look like and in the in the back seat and the carpet and that sort of stuff it's not bad it looks pretty good but what's going on with this bad boy as you can see you can come see here look at look at the engine you can see down on top we, we've started it up i can take the spark plugs out sandblast them get it started it'll take right off but you look down top of that spark plug you see antifreeze I'm, I'm i'm thinking that the head gasket must be gone in this bad boy or or whatever i think it's leaking out of the head bolt or something or other but i'm thinking that has to be dealt with it will run because we've had it running and jolene has driven it it's got brakes and all that sort of stuff um but Basically, we have left it. I don't know if I slammed that or why. Shut the hood on it, but it's been sitting outdoors for a while. It's not a bad looking little car. It could have something done to it. From what I understand, it's quite rare. And it's not bad underneath either. You know, it's not a bad little car. It probably should be dealt with. Should be. We'll go in the shop. This is where the 40, where the 40 has been setting for quite a while. I got some stuff in here, but this is where the 40 setting. I'm kind of every time I come in here, I think, "Wow, I like that car." And uh, basically, what happened is um, I put it all together, and then I didn't want to spend any money on it. <laughs> and that's basically where it's at right now. It needs money spent on it because when you once you start doing the body work and start doing engine work and brake work, uh, radiator, uh, engine, battery, all that sort of stuff, that's where the money comes involved. And uh, but but basically, I've got all the metal work completed on it i guess making it look the way it wants to look but uh it needs what it needs now is money spent on it this is just a little shop where i put stuff you know i hang stuff or put stuff in i've got a couple signs over there have the, that have blown down over the winters and what happens is we get a bad winter sometimes and uh, they blow down i just bring them in the shop and put them here basically but uh, this is where i keep a little bit of stuff that I keep for trinkets. Um, I wouldn't mind having a taking stuff, some stuff to the flea market, but it's a lot of work to pick stuff up and take stuff somewhere and try to sell it. You know, like there's just little things everywhere. Little things everywhere. It's Friday and it's shop tour day today. Just because I'm feeling lazy, I'll do a little something in the end, but. Every morning, not every morning, but the last couple mornings, um, I've been I've been pulling out the Pontiac and setting it here, uh, or parking it out front so I can get uh, Mike's truck inside, and I get that inside because I just want to work on the sills and stuff. But basically, I just pull the Pontiac out. It's starting some good, I can tell you that. Uh, it's starting good because when I pumped it yesterday, I flooded it. And I didn't even have to pump it. It's starting good. It's running good. I think it could be a good driving car. Let's go through the shop and we'll go back into the other build and we'll show them other projects. It's okay if I feel lazy one day, isn't it? Hope so. Hope so. I got Elvis underneath the plastic. Um, I just got that sitting there. That's the 55 Merc. And basically it's just kind of setting there. It's kind of just setting there. Mike's truck's pulled in on the other side. Um, we'll finish the video off on Mike's truck. I'll show you exactly what I'm doing. But we got the other cab corner. The other cab corners put on. Um, the other, and you also you seen the opposite cab corner put on yesterday. I got the sill put on. Now I'm ready to put sills on this side. We'll end it with that. We'll do something there. And you can see in here in the back room, I've kind of got a, a big mess going on. This is where the, the Pontiac was tore apart. When we tore it apart, this is where we bring all the stuff and laid it on the floor. There needs to be a big cleaning day, but you know, it, it happens when you're into cars and, and messing with stuff and, and trying to do a bunch of stuff. Things get 
messy and dirty and then you have to clean it up so there's a bunch of time that i have to spend cleaning this stuff up i've got the engines down back they're just a few engines that i have there's two of them that are rebuilt um there's a couple there's a 348 there that's a pretty cool engine we'll just see when we're doing the shop tour got some stainless steel header for jolene's engine happy about that that'll make it look good underneath the hood uh found a um I don't know what you call that, a grill bar for the for the Pontiac, maybe. I'm not sure if I put that on there or not, but that probably looked pretty cool. Um, I've got a 348 there. This is just for the people that haven't seen anything in shop tour before, but I've got a 348 there. It's got a newer 305 with a, the two fours. Jimbo give me that um, for doing his Pontiac or his Ozenbeel. Pontiac, I'm getting all mixed up. Ozenbeel, I did the floor in it and put some, did some welding on it, but he gave me the two four barrel intake for that. These two engines here are rebuilt. Um, the 265 is pretty cool. That could go into an early hot rod because, you know, that's the first V8 for Chevy. Um, Chevy had one in 55 and Ford had one in 32. That's an intake that I bought to, that I just got dressed up on a 305 that I might use someday. I'm not sure. Um, I bought a, another 305 here that was cheap. I think it was $350. I got a bunch of dress up stuff for the valve pan covers and stuff like that. Jolene's tripping over everything. She's not used to being back here. She, she looks amazing today. She's got a little belly button showing, a little belly button ring on. God bless her. But um, there's some valve pan covers there and an old breather off a nose and beel. Some intakes. I got a bunch of trans, I got a couple automatic transmissions, a couple standard transmissions that I have on the shelf kind of you know waiting for projects or whatever you know basically a couple steering wheels that are primed up ready for paint i got some just a bunch of stuff everything matters though to be honest with you everything matters i've um, got some jolene stuff here this is jolene's bugatti stuff some of it's there i got a mess going on there but it is what it is basically it's just shop tour day We got a couple containers here. We got the 35 Dodge. We bought that a while back. Um, we got it fairly reasonable. I'm not sure what I want to do with it yet. And the only reason I haven't done anything was because I'm not sure where I want to go with it. Do I want to build a build a half ton out of it? Do I want to chop it and um, just chop, make it a four door chopped car and put it back together? Um, do I want to make it a cab over? like? There's a whole bunch of things going through my brain. You can make a comment on that. What do you think that four door? What, what, what would you like to see that four door become? This is the the, cab, the 50 Merc with the 36 Ford four door that I cut in half and made a cab over on it, sitting in here. Um, it got a little bit of you know just a little bit of rust going on it from setting here and probably from the container sweating, but it's. It's just sitting here, like I'm, it's waiting for me to get back at it. And there will be a time when I'll get back at it. It's just not right this moment. It's hard to move the truck out and get it around and get it into the building or even to get it in here by myself or just me and Jolene. I have to have a little bit of help sometimes. And that might come after a while. That might come after a while. We've got a, uh, a brand new pressure washer that we've never used. A guy named Ted Ogilvy came here and, and give that to me um, because he enjoyed the show or whatever. And uh, we've never ever used it. We've never ever hooked it up. But now that we have the big new shop out back, I'm hoping that we're going to hang that thing up and be proud of it. And maybe we can get Ted Ogilvy come to service it or something. I'm not sure. But um, he gave it to us. Brand new. Ted Ogilvy from Easy Clean. God bless him. Uh, we got a five-speed transmission there with a drive shaft put on it. Um, that 5-speed transmission is hooked to a flathead. It's got a bow housing for a flathead. Uh, I don't know. We made a video of us acquiring that, did we not? We acquired it, acquired it out of a 48 Ford that the, the guy was changing it over to a, an overhead valve 302 or a, a, just a more powerful engine. But that engine right there, I'm saying, is probably a real, real good engine. Come look at this. Do you know what has happened, sweetheart? See that bad boy? Yeah, that's 
baby smart, Jolene smart. It's been co converted over to 12 volt. We know that because we've done that with Wally and we've done it at the racetrack actually, but we just, there were so many people, it's hard to pay attention. We have a 48 Chevy fleet line here. Um, we acquired before we did TV or while we were doing TV. And uh, we have it in here and this is a good old car. It, I don't think it's been messed with a whole bunch. It's obviously been painted but it hasn't been messed with a whole bunch. The, you know, the interior and all the screws and all the door handles and all that stuff seem to be in place. It looks really good. Um, it's even got his hat in it and even got a couple lug luggage bags in the back to match. Like it's, it's a pretty good old car. Um, but it's been in here for a little while. It's got brand new white walls on it. It's got a six cylinder overhead valve six cylinder 50 all day and 60 for five minutes basically um we have some i have got some bigger tools over here that i'm not sure what i'm what i'm doing with them I'm not doing anything with them right at the present moment the, i got the bead roller there but um there's a big drill press that i i acquired quite cheap i think i paid 150 dollars for it i don't think you could buy the metal in it for 150 dollars it's just something that you know for that much money I had to go get it. We got a metal shear over there. It doesn't look like anything. Well, it doesn't look like much, but it's a metal shear. I um, haven't really had it going or anything like that, but they put the metal in there. That was that shears. You can see that turn. It turns slow, but I, I think you would shear some heavy duty stuff with that shear. Like you could shear probably 14 gauge or even probably plate, no, or big plate probably. I have never done it. I have a, a louver press here that Earl, a friend of mine, put together. It's kind of stuck because of the, the rust on it. She probably should put some oil on that. Anyways, the louver press there, you just put the handle in it, handles back there, handle it, and, and do it by hand, just pull it down. It gives it lots of tension. Uh, we have the bead roller there I use quite a bit. Uh, I have a, an, a wheel there that I made a long time ago out of a baron and a wheel off a cart. And I also have the green machine. There's another louver. I use that quite a bit. I've louvered quite a few hoods with that. I have. I should get the Chevy out, set it beside the Pontiac, but we'll wait for that. We'll wait. We got the 40 Plymouth over here. This is another project that I've started and played with. And uh, this car has sat outdoors for a while and it's been indoors for a while. Uh, me and Jolene did some videos on it where she did the running boards on it. I fixed the door skin on it. Um, we made this one piece hood. It's still, it's still tat knocked down with a couple pieces of welds on there knocking it down so it stayed in place. Uh, we pushed it in here because I feel like it should be in, underneath the weather right now. Should, you know, probably should get at it. Made my own grill for it. Um, we used the Ozenbeel headlights. I think we made videos on that. We put our own grill in it. We did that. It's a good looking car, this one. It's a good looking car. It's not as good as looking as Jolene, but it's a good looking car. The running boards were made of exhaust, and then we sheeted the metal. Jolene welded it all up, made it look fantastic. Um, it's got Ozenbeel headlights on it. It's got an Ozenbeel dash in it. It was chopped, very heavy, uh, made to look like a hard top. This car probably, probably should be should be completed at some time, but it's at the stage where it needs a bunch of money spent on it. That's basically where it's at. I hate to say that. It's easy for me to weld them up and get them like this or get them in primer and um, cut the roofs off them and do a bunch of stuff to them. But when you start, when you start taking the and spending a bunch of money on them, um, when you have to do the chassis on them, when you have to put the engine in them and put a battery in them, put the, you know, put the hoses on them and do all that stuff, that's where it costs a bunch of money, m bunch of money, and uh, you really have to make sure that you really want to get invested in something that far. Um, there's not a bunch of money put in that car. There's more time than anything, but that's that's what I have is time, basically. Um, this is the Jaguar sitting here. You know, I got a lot of flack over putting that square roof on that car, but I really feel once the car is lowered, lowered down and with a paint job on that thing is going to look awesome. Like, um, it's going to look awesome. And the reason being is because you wouldn't ever see anything like that on the street anywhere, as I wouldn't think. So it's kind of, it's at, this is another one, it's at that point where, um, you could spend a bunch of money on it to make it look like something. Um, 
but they're kind of sitting here waiting in the in the wings until I want to go a little bit further with them basically picked up the red that went with um, the the flathead that's a good thing um, if we ever wanted to build another race car or where this car here was a, where this 50 Merc was a flathead it will slide right back in it again we've got a five speed that going back but it would be a nice nice cruiser with that we've got a 351 it's a Windsor but it's it was in a boat I don't think that matters much take off the all the gear and and um, we got a five speed that can go behind it so we do have a Ford engine uh, we had <laughs> Our friend Danny explained to us that um, paint guns were on sale at Princess Auto. Um, they were $15 a piece, and I got Jolene to buy me 50 of them. <laughs> so I have enough paint guns for the rest of my life. All these are paint guns. Pretty cool, eh? 15 bucks a piece. I, you know, they're, they're, I'm going to have them. I never have to buy another paint gun again. And I spent less money. I got 50 paint guns <laughs> for less money than I could buy one paint gun. Um, a real good, one, real good one that I'd have to look after. Um, basically, I have them there for when I'm going to paint and do stuff, basically. Jolene's backing up the camera so fine. She's like, a, she's like a drink of wine. She's fine. Let's go in the building. Let's take a walk around there for a minute. I've got the truck over here. Or uh, I got the van. I want to do something with that van. You'd I'll probably be surprised what I want to do with it, but um, I do have the van, and I want to make something out of that. The thirty-five, the thirty-five Dodge is a pretty cool car. I like most everything about it, but I want to, I want to make something out of it. I think we got the garage door here. They're laying here. They have to be. Um, painted. Joni wants a color on them for the building. The building she picked is all black and she wants to um, put a detail, what's it called? A contrast color. So this is the building on the inside. Um, the wiring the wiring is being started. We got some wires running there. Uh, you, can, you, you can see all the outlets every so often for, I'm not sure, just for, just for outlets. Uh, I see that we have some insulation coming. Um, some screws are being put in the roof right at the present moment. I think we're roof tight. Yeah, I think we're roof tight because it's pretty dark in here. Um, we have a door in the back and we have a door up front to come in, basically. We're hoping that, I don't know what we're hoping, just kind of, you know, going by day to day if it happens to get finished before snow falls we would like to get move all our cars up here that would be nice that would be nice all the windows up top are just for light you know a lot of work's going on a lot of work's going on we are in floor heat so there's the pipes coming out there. There's the infill heat. That's going to heat the place. Take a walk out and show you the outside. The front is still in insulation. Uh, we're, we're sided. The roof is done all the way. The roof is done um, right now. The, we're sided all the way up to the man door. Um, it's all black. All the siding, all the roof, everything is black. Jolene's got a color picked for the contrast color. And uh, it's going well. Let's go in and do a little bit to the truck. I'll show you what I'm doing. I'm not sure if many people like the idea of the truck being work. You know, doesn't matter does not matter uh, I, I'm gonna do it because I said I would do it and that's the reason I am doing it come on in sweetheart alrighty 
All right, let's go back at the truck here. That was enough tour for today. It's kind of give me a little breather. So I've got the cab corner put on this side. I did the exact same thing on this side as I did on the other side. We'll take a walk over the other side. Uh, you seen yesterday I put the cab corner and fixed the inside of the door. I think it was an hour. It was an hour. Uh, and that's a little bit of talking also. I had it outside last night and got some rain on it, so it got a little bit tingy of rust on it, but that's okay because I'm going to take a, a drill and clean it back off. I got, as you can see, I've got the sill put on it. I've got a sill put on it all the way along. It's welded in the center. I made it out of two pieces. So there's a brand new sill here, a brand new sill all the way to the front. So that's put on. So we got this cab corner and the sill put on yesterday. I think I got a little over three hours. I've got three hours in that side doing the cab corner and, and the sill. So I've got an hour and a little bit. So I'm going to have three hours on this side. So basically I'm going to have six hours a day, a day I'll say a day, um, in this truck to fix it, um, to put two cab corners on it and two sills on it. There's the sills that I've cut off. You can see the rubber piece that I cut off. I cut them both off. You can see how I cut it off. And I cut it off and then it's like that. And then when you get up inside, underneath here, this piece right here, it's so, like it's so rusty, you know, as you know, as sills rust out, it's rusty like that. There's the garbage out of half of the sill. The other half just left half there to show you what kind of garbage is there left over when you're doing this sort of stuff. I just took a zip cut. Uh, this rubber was right, this rubber was right there. The top of the rubber right there. So when I just, when I cut them off, I just cut the top of that rubber and I still have the rubber. I'll probably put that back on, no doubt in my mind, just to make it look like something. Uh, so I measured up two pieces of metal, put some bends in them, like that. I'm going to lay down here and show you. What a nice easy day this is. Oh baby. What a nice easy day this is. So I got two sills, so this piece will go on here, it'll go on the bottom, you can see it goes on the bottom, and then we'll just weld it, tack weld it along here, all the way along. No need to, uh, no need for me to weld it on solid. I am not restoring the truck. I am putting sills and cab quarters on it for inspection, for a two-year inspection. So the cab corners have to be fixed and the sills have to be fixed for inspection. This is a farm truck. <laughs> this is a farm truck and I am getting it ready for inspection. So um, we must understand if anybody's getting something ready for inspection, I mean, the, the less money you have to spend, generally the better. Just for shits and giggles, I, um, or I got Jolene to price out cab corners and rockers. Cab corners and rockers are, would cost us $600. Cause if we could, could get them when we need them, it costs us $600. By the time you ran to the store, and spent six hundred dollars and picked up your rockers and your and your cab corners i'm going to have the truck done so basically um you've spent six if you if you want to spend your money and and not go for it you've spent six hundred dollars and i will have the truck done basically that's what i'm thinking that's where i'm at and when i started it it wasn't about what you could buy it's how fast you can fix it and basically that's where I go every time I try to fix it and, and, and try to buy something if you know well, let's face it if you were restoring the truck yeah like try to get the panels you can but what happens when you can't get the panel can you fix it <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say um, basically um, for the people that do not have six hundred dollars that's who that's that's where I'm at if you do not have the six hundred dollars to fix your cab corners and put rockers on it that's where it comes in that you have to make them and that's where I go every time is I, I'm not looking for to spend money I'm looking for how I can fix it and I am for the guy who wants to fix their truck or their car that's who I'm for that's or that's what I'm about and that's what I do I'm gonna put this rocker on and I'm gonna show you maybe a trick 
maybe a boo-boo, whether you take it, whatever you want to take it. You can throw it away or you can keep it. But I'm going to show you something that I do that helps on this situation when you get something that's rusty. We're, we're trying to pass inspection here. We're, we've welded up a cab corner. We didn't buy it. We bought, we welded it up. We fixed it. If, like I mean, to me, um, that cab corner would last just as long as a, as a patch panel. I am going to grind it off. I'm going to fiberglass and I'm going to fix it. If you bought a patch panel, you're going to have to weld it, grind it, fiberglass it and fill it. So I'm doing the exact same thing. But what I'm going to show you is I'm going to put this um, raw, this sill on and uh, I'm just going to show you a little trick that um, helps in situations that if you're having a hard time trying to get your car or your truck ready for inspection. On the underneath here, it's if you take a look underneath here like this, or just right here, it's really rusty. Like it's really, 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 really rusty. And it's quite, it's thick. Like it's heavy duty stuff. Um, it, and it's hard to get your sill to stick to that or get it welded to that and get it tight to that to get it stick. Um, you could take a bunch of time and try to clean that off, grind that off, clean that off, try to do that sort of stuff. This is what I do. I'm going to show you. I'm going to put the sill on. I've got it bent. It's just a flat piece of metal. It fits. It fits. Put that inside the door. I got it fitting down here. It's just got a bend in it. Just fitting. Now, it's up there tight and right. Where I can weld it, I weld it. I'm going to take that part in a little bit. This one's not tight. I'm going to push this one in a little bit. All right. Where it's on the bottom, that right there, I got it cleaned off nice so that I can push it on with a third arm. Let's do it. Let's do it. I guess I'm going to get into it. It's time to do something, I guess. It's time. Did not drill any holes in the bottom of the sill. Trying to clamp, clamp it on, make it tight. Not, do, not doing that. I'm going to show you something. Third arm. Just going to tack on the outside here. Oh, gee. Beat the paint off her. Farm truck, farm truck. The reason I start at the center is because I can work it that way and then work it that way. Just tacking it on for now. We're up on there tight. It's good. It's good. All right. Now, I've just got that tack on there. I'm gonna throw a bunch of more tacks on it. Probably every inch or every couple inches, I'll throw a tack on it. That'll hold that sill on there. Once I get the rubber taken off there, I'll put something over top of that. I don't know if I fiberglass or probably just seam seal, but I got that rubber there and I'm gonna run that rubber right over top of the work that I've done. So you would never tell. I'm gonna take this is just using my, using my brain because I want to put this rubber back on. I'll take all them clips out, all them little clips out. I'm not going to drill holes in that. Um, you can see what happened. It just rotted out around it. I'm not going to drill holes in that new sill. I'm going to take some, clean this off. I'm going to put some two-faced tape on that. And I'm going to two-faced tape that from there down to there. And it's going to be taped on. So that's, 
rubber's going back on, but I'm going to apply it in a different method. And basically, you just take some thinner, clean it off, two-faced tape it, pull it off, run a bead of tape down there, what, how straight I want it, and then go with the tape and stick it back on. But as I got that sill stuck on there, on the underneath, you remember that it was really, 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 really rusty, and it's really hard to get something to stick to that. I didn't drill any holes in it. Uh, I find sometimes when you drill the holes in the rocker, then you try to weld it up on there. Uh, it takes for hours. Basically what I did is I just cut it off, pulled all the rust out, beat it with a hammer the best I could. This is what I do. I take a drill and a self-tapper. If it doesn't go through the first time, I grab another self-tapper, because you'll see if it doesn't. We'll start in the center. We've got it pried up at the bottom. There's lots of metal there. Just gonna feel there, lots, there's lots of metal. Doesn't wanna take. doesn't want to take. I found out there's a difference between good self-tappers and shitty ones. There's a difference. That is not going anywhere. That is in there like big time. So now, as I have that self-tapper in there, I would run, as, you know, probably six inches apart. Bang, bang, bang. Not welding it anymore. It's stuck in there. Didn't drill any holes. I drilled a hole, obviously, with the self-tapper. This is what I do. Now that I got it in there, Well, around the edge of the self-tapper. Not coming out. So I've welded the edge of the self-tapper, nice and clean metal. Take my flapper wheel. Would never want to just hang a self-tapper hanging down through the sill to make it look bad. When you look at it now, it looks like a nice plug weld. And it's not coming off. So simply, um, that's how I do it. Um, I feel like it's just an easier way to do it. Uh, it's faster. I do not have to go along and clean all that metal up and grind it and try to clamp that sill up there just as best it can and, and then try to go through a hole and try to weld to the sill to weld to the, weld to the, the new rocker that I made. And you know just as well as I do, if you've ever done this work before, it's a hard thing to do to make them stick and get them flat through there to get them welded on, especially when they're rotten and there's a bunch of rust and a bunch of different metal there. Because I have not gone along and, and really stripped that piece off or that inside rocker. I've not stripped it off and took that time and ground it all off and took every spot. Well, I haven't done that. I've ripped off all the rust, beat it off with a hammer, took a flapper wheel and cleaned it up a little bit, and then I go that way with it. That way there I know it's going to stay and I have no issues. Um, when you start trying to clean that all up, you can spend hours underneath there trying to make it look like something and you can make it look like dog poop. If you've never done it before, you don't know, <laughs> basically. But if you've done it before, 
Um, that's a little trick right there that can move you along a lot quicker. So I can put that piece on in 20 minutes. Not even 20 minutes. I've, I just sat down and stuck that on. So now I'm going to get in here. I'm going to get this up tighter here. Push that on tighter. We're up, we're up tight. Get that pushed on tighter there. It looks like it's unlevel, but it's not. It's just the shape of the rocker. It's a little thinner here than it is here. And basically because the truck is going on a, like this. But I'll get that in a tight a spot while that along there. One, two, three, four, five, six. Self-tappers. Weld the heads of them, grind them off, make them look like spot welds, and I'm done. All right, everybody. I take it if you like it, and throw it away if you don't. But make sure you know that when, once it's done, I've got new rockers on it, new cab quarters on it, before you got back from the store from spending $600. Like, share, comment, come back. We'll see you tomorrow.